In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the inflection points of a function and the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down. So let's talk about concavity first. So in this picture, the function is concave up everywhere. So that's how it looks like. And this is the shape of a graph that's concave down. Now, Whenever the function is concave up, the second derivative is positive, which means that the first derivative is increasing. When it's concave down, the second derivative is negative, which means the first derivative is decreasing. So make sure you understand that about concavity. Now, to determine the inflection point, the inflection point occurs when the second derivative is equal to zero. And there's something else that must occur as well. At the inflection point, the concavity must change, either from negative to positive or positive to negative. So let me give you some examples. So if we focus on the left side of that curve, notice that it's concave up you can see the concave up shape. And the right side is concave down. So at some point in the middle, the concavity changes. So the point where the concavity changes, now that is the inflection point. Now for the curve on the right, it's the reverse. So here the graph is concave down. And on the right side, we could see that it's concave up. So in the middle, it has to switch from concave down to concave up. So anytime the concavity changes from positive to negative or negative to positive, we have an inflection point in the middle. So the inflection point typically is between the two relative extrema. Here we have a maximum and here we have a minimum. In between those two extreme values exists an inflection point. Here we have a minimum, and on this side we have a maximum. And in between uh, those uh, values we have the inflection point. So those are some things that you want to keep in mind. But now let's work on some practice problems. Let's put this information to good use. So let's say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x. Identify all inflection points and determine the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the second derivative of the function. So let's begin by finding the first derivative. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared and the derivative of x squared is 2x times 9, that's 18x, and the derivative of x is 1 times 7, so that gives us 7. Now let's move on to the second derivative. The derivative of x squared is 2x times 3, that's 6x, and the derivative of negative 18x is just negative 18. Now once we have the second derivative, set it equal to 0 and find the inflection points. So if we factor out 6, 6x divided by 6 is x, negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. So we have a potential inflection point at 3. If you set x minus 3 equal to 0 and add 3 to both sides, you'll get x is equal to 3. Now let's create a sign chart on a number line. Let's say if we plug in a number that's greater than 3, like 4. Will the second derivative be positive or negative? 4 minus 3 is equal to a positive number. So it's going to be positive on the right side. If we plug in 2, a number less than 3, 2 minus 3 is negative. So on the left side, it's concave down because the second derivative is negative. On the right side, it's concave up. All the way to the left, we have negative infinity. And to the right, we have positive infinity. So now let's write the intervals. So the function is concave down 
from negative infinity to 3. And it's concave up between 3 and positive infinity. Now notice that the concavity changes at 3. It changes from negative to positive. So that tells us that we have an inflection point at x equals 3. Now sometimes you may need to find a y coordinate. If you do, plug in 3 into the original function to get the y coordinate if you want to write the inflection point as an ordered pair. So let's go ahead and do that. But first I gotta make some space. So let's plug in 3. f of 3 is gonna be 3 to the third power minus 9 times 3 squared plus 7 times 3. If we multiply 3 3 times, we'll get 27. 3 squared is 9, and 7 times 3 is 21. 27 plus 21 is 48. 9 times 9 is 81. And then 48 minus 81 is negative 33. So the inflection point exists at 3 comma negative 33 for this problem. So you can write that as an ordered pair. Now let's work on another problem. So let's say that f of x is x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 1. So go ahead and find all of the inflection points and the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down. So feel free to pause the video if you want to work on this problem. So let's begin by finding the first derivative just like we did before. So the derivative of x to the fourth using the power rule is 4x cubed. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times 4. That's going to be 12x squared. And the derivative of a constant is 0. Now for the second derivative, if we differentiate x cubed, that's going to be 3x squared times 4. So that's 12x squared. And the derivative of x squared is 2x times 12. That's going to be 24x. So let's set it equal to 0, and let's take out the greatest common factor, which is 12x. 12x squared divided by 12x is x. 24x divided by 12x is 2. And so if we set each factor equal to 0, we're going to get two points of interest. x is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 2. So let's create a sign chart. And let's put these numbers in ascendant order. Now let's pick a test point that's greater than 0. So let's try 1. 12 times 1 is positive. 1 plus 2 is positive. If we multiply two positive numbers, it will give us a positive result. Now let's pick a number between negative 2 and 0. So let's try negative 1. 12 times negative 1 is negative, but negative 1 plus 2 is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. And now if we pick a number less than negative 2, like negative 3, 12 times negative 3 is negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative. So if you multiply two negative numbers, it will give you a positive number. So here it's concave up in red and it's concave down in blue. Now let's not forget the infinity symbols. So at this point, now that we've completed the sign chart, we can now write the intervals where it's concave up and concave down. So let's start where it's concave up. It's concave up between negative infinity and negative 2 and then union for the other section 0 to infinity. So you just got to write it from left to right, negative infinity to negative 2, and then to connect to the other side, union, 0 to infinity. Now it's concave down between negative 2 and 0. Now we need to determine the inflection points. At negative 2, the concavity changes from concave up to concave down. So that's an inflection point. And 0 is also an inflection point because the concavity changes from negative to positive, from down to up. 
So now let's get the y coordinates that correspond to the x coordinates for the inflection points. So let's plug in 0 first. So if we plug in 0 into the equation, this is just going to equal 1. So the, one of the inflection points is going to be 0, comma 1. Now for the other one, let's plug in negative 2. Negative 2 to the fourth power is positive 16. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. And 16 minus 32 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 1 is negative 15. So the second inflection point is going to be negative 2 comma negative 15. And so that's it. So that's how you can determine the inflection points and the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down. So keep that in mind. It's concave up whenever the second derivative is positive, and it's concave down when the second derivative is negative or less than zero. And the inflection point occurs where the second derivative is equal to zero, and if the concavity changes. If it doesn't change, then it's not an inflection point. So for example, let's say if we performed if we got the second derivative, and these were the points of interest. So let's say the second derivative is positive when x is greater than 5, but negative between 4 and 5, negative at between 1 and 4, but positive when it's less than 1. So 1 would be an inflection point, because the concavity changes. And 5 is an inflection point, but 4 is not an inflection point because the concavity doesn't change across 4. It doesn't change sign. So this would not be an inflection point. So keep that in mind. The concavity has to change for it to be an inflection point.